Hello everyone and welcome to Ed Solar Review's 100,000 subscribers celebratory uh, Q&A. You know, it's a thing that many YouTubers and social media influencers like to do as soon as they become, you know, famous, let's face it. Now, but to celebrate this joyous occasion of reaching 100,000 subscribers, and I got my play button right there. I got it in the mail the day I'm shooting this uh, little video. I thought, you know, I make a lot of videos about cars, uh, but this goes to the longer time viewers and those who just, uh, you know, rolled into my channel after one of my latest videos, which got more than a million views, which I think is, is absolutely awesome. Maybe you'd like to know a little bit more about me and my personal taste in cars. So that's what this little video is about. I asked you to send me some questions and uh, questions I received. So let's get going. All right, the first question is from Low Rider. Um, who are you? I just stumbled across you and I know nothing about you. Tell us. Well, here I am. The man, the dude, the guy, the face, uh, the voice behind Ed Sauter Reviews. I'm Edward, 25 years old, and I live in the Netherlands, or Holland. I do not live in the United States, but I do have an endless obsession and love for the American car and also obscure car. Really just anything that you do not see a lot here on our roads. So the next question is a question that many people have asked me in kind of similar ways, and that is, where does this love for the American car come from? What, what is it with you in American cars? And that is a, it's a good question, because I don't know either. Um, look, everybody has their own interests. There are people that love football. There are people that love airplanes. There are people that love bird watching, spotting, just, you know, birds. And for me, it's cars, especially American cars. As I just explained, um, it's probably because we don't see them a lot over here and you get an appetite for things that you cannot have or that you don't see a lot. But overall, I can probably say, what, what is it that appeal more about American cars than European cars? Is that, especially from like the 1950s and 60s and 70s, the heyday of the American auto industry, like the general American car was just on a different level than a European car, save for some Mercedes and BMW and Jaguars, I get it, but even your standard Chevrolet, and let's face it, like the European equivalent would be, let's say a Volkswagen or a Fiat. What do you get? You get a big car with the right proportions, beautifully styled, you know, with, with, with a bit of luck, like a, like a fastback styling. The proportions between the body and the car tires are just sublime. And what you get is a car with automatic transmission, climate control, oh, sorry, air conditioning, climate controls on all other level, uh, with a big rumbling V8. You, you just get a lot more car for your money. And, and then you have the European cars like Fiat's that have, you know, those tiny little bumpers and those, those tail, those cheap looking tail lights that seem like they, they got stolen off a caravan. And then you got an American car with the big chrome bumpers, you know, with, with well integrated tail lights, with, with an intricate little pattern over it or, or design. It's just, they put a little more attention to it. European cars, the Opals, the Fiat's of that time, I don't know, they just look, you know, fragile. And I guess that's why I like American cars so much. It's, it's a combination of style, the right size, the right proportions, uh, and just overall looking cool and looking very good. Another question a lot of people ask me, okay, so if you love American cars so much, what do you currently drive? Do you own classic American cars? Well, as luck would have it, I own about 10 American cars. The problem is they are only scale 1 to 18. <laughs> I get a nice little uh, collection of die-cast models. Um, I do not own a classic American car currently. Otherwise you would already know it by my channel. I would have already made videos about it. And I know that is a bit weird. You know, a guy that likes to talk big and knows all and everything about, you know, classic American cars. But what does he know? He doesn't even drive one. I'm like the exact opposite of uh, Adam from, you know, uh, uh, rare classic cars. Uh, <laughs> uh, it's because I have, well, I have my reasons to not own a classic uh, American car currently. 
I do not have the space, nor the time, nor the technical know-how to uh, maintain a classic American car. Um, I have like a Jeremy Clarkson level of mechanical understanding. What else is electrical in here? Well, not the exhaust, exhaust manifold. Now you can learn everything through YouTube, through you know uh, uh, manuals, etc. But like I said, I also don't really have the the time and the place to do it. Now that brings me to the second thing. So what do I currently drive? Well, that's another problem. I currently do not own a car. For those of you that have been around quite some time, uh, I made a review about what used to be my car, a 2005 or 6, I forgot, Hyundai or Hyundai or Hyundai, or whatever you call it, uh, XG350. Absolutely love the car. Three and a half liter V6, automatic, uh, soft suspension, floaty suspension, more or less American driving characteristics, as in, you know, it, it, it just doesn't take corners at all. Uh, like a month or so ago, somebody decided they did not like my car very much. I had an accident. Uh, there's nothing wrong with me, I'm fine, it was not a heavy accident, but it still was an accident where the car in front of me, an Audi RS6 no less, came to a complete standstill, emergency braking, and so I had to brake as well. And luckily I stopped in time, there was still sta uh, space left between the rear bumper of the Audi and the front bumper of my car. If it wasn't for two cars behind me managing to crash into me in the rear, you can see the pictures probably, and then pushing me forward, into the back end of the Audi. And it is a so-called economic total loss. It, the car was technically still fine, but to re like the cost of repairing the car uh, would far exceed its uh, value at that point. So I decided to just, you know, let it go with pain in my heart, but let it go, send it to the scrapyard, and the car is no longer. This does not mean, however, I will not get a car, because I am currently looking for a car, but currently I do not own a car. I know. What made you do YouTube? That is probably a combination of loving these classic American cars, no one I can share my passion with, friends and family are not interested as I am, which is perfectly fine, they got their own interests, which I don't really care about. Maybe the appeal of being a YouTuber um, appealed to me, you know, doing YouTube, what is it, how do I do it? But really it's, it's just a, yeah, a combination of sharing my passion, having a creative outlet of making videos, and just sharing it with the world. Plus I have an, like also a general interest in history. And so everything comes together. Cars, history, never really having a problem doing presentations. And just trying to share my passion is what led to the creation of a YouTube channel that we all now know as Ed's Auto Reviews. Have you ever broken the law and do you regret it? I've talked to my lawyer and I can't say anything about it. What is your favorite Peugeot? One that has been crashed into a wall. D underscore dude 32 asks, where do babies come from? Babies come from the tailpipe of a Dodge Little Redis Crest truck. And uh, have you ever wondered that if olive oil comes from olives, where does baby oil come from? Darian the Scorpion, nice name, asks, of all the Automotive History series episodes, which episode would you say was your most favorite to make so far? Well, <laughs> Those tend to be the episodes that are performing really well and are my most viewed episodes. I'm talking about the weird Chrysler cars of the early 1960s, the recent episode about the 58 GMs, uh, the whole Malaise era series, the funky vans of the 1970s, uh, the Pimpmobiles, the Finn War. I don't really have one single episode I like the most. I guess the one that I'm most proud of is one that's not even watched all that much, but that's the video about uh, the demise of Packard, which I, I think I beautifully told kind of like a detective-like story, so it continuously switches between the reality and, you know, noir movie-like story. If you really know the story about Packard, the video is probably like 10 times more awesome. So it's really the episodes that I like to work on the best, like the stories. Uh, and you can tell because I always put a little more effort and go the extra mile and play around with new different concepts in these 
uh, videos. So you can kind of tell which stories I like the best uh, because they're mo the most viewed and those are also the episodes that I uh, have the most fun creating. Is it Silico asks, you can only drive one for the rest of your life. The Bentley Flying Spur or the Rolls Royce Ghost? That would be the Bentley. Um, great question. Uh, um, I do love some classic British luxury, but I think that if I would ever, you know, get the million subscribers and, and a very, very big fat bank account, I would not get the Rolls Royce. I think that's like the uninspiring default choice for, hey, look, I am rich and I got money. Bentley is also kind of the same car in that regard, but I like GTs and Bentley is in that sweet spot. You have this luxurious interior, you know, with the right amount of chrome, wood and leather. All those things are really like, and then you got a, uh, what is it, a V8 or even still the V12 and W12 under the hood. So you got performance and luxury. Papa Tom asks, do you have any hobbies or interests besides cars? No. Stipey or Stipey, do you have any siblings? Are you in a relationship? Do you still have a job? I do not have any siblings. Uh, I'm an only child. I do have a relationship and I still have a job. YouTube it can be very uh, lucrative, but it's no financial stability as opposed to a job where you know what you gotta do and you know what you get every month. I still have a job outside YouTube, try to combine these two, but it does give me the freedom to not work five days, but four days in the week. Every Wednesday, which is currently the day that I'm doing this video, I'm uh, having my day off and I like to work on YouTube along with plenty of other evenings during the week and usually one day in the weekend. Let's just say that I got a lot to do during the week and it keeps me off the streets. If you could own any car, any year, from any country, and money was no object, what would you choose? Now I chose this question specifically because it could instantly say some obscure car, like the the car I saw in the Peterson Museum at the vault, the Rolls Royce Round Door, which I think is one of the most beautiful cars ever made. Which in in case of this question, I could own because everything is being paid for. The car is beautiful to look at, but it's not really fun to drive. No synchronized uh, uh, gearbox. Uh, it, you know, it requires a lot of effort to drive these cars, and I don't think you will get a lot of pleasure out of it. That being said, I would probably choose a car that is a bit more more easy to live with. I'd go and I, it's not even the most exclusive or, or sexy option, but I think I'd go for a Lincoln Continental Mark III, my, almost my all-time favorite personal luxury car. I've driven it when I was over at uh, Adam's house, thank you so much, uh, and I absolutely loved it. David S. asks, well, he, he had a big question that was about uh, electric vehicles and if they are going to take over the world and if it's not just all a big scam because are they as eco-friendly as, um, as they pretend to be? I want to use this question to express my views on EVs because here we go, I like electric cars. You can rage now, uh, you can unsubscribe now if you like, but it's the simple truth. I know what's currently going on, especially with car enthusiasts and the older car enthusiasts. They hate electric cars, mostly out of emotional reasons, I guess, because I don't understand what this is with the whole, you're either with us or against us. So you either love old cars, you love V8s, you love gas guzzlers, you love engines, or you're a tree-hugging environmentalist and you only love electric cars. Why can't you love both? Which I do. Probably also because of my age. I'm still a bit more open to changes as opposed to people that are maybe slightly older. I like electric vehicles in not necessarily in a tree-hugging way. I have the same criticism, you know, where, where does the green power of these cars come from? Is it really green? Do you know about the cobalt mines with the children? I get it, okay? In my eyes, you cannot deny that the electric engine, so the electric drivetrain in itself, 
is a logical next step in the development of, you know, what, what, ma what makes cars go. What's not to like about an electric engine? It is noise-free, vibration-free, it doesn't have any moving parts at all, almost no moving parts as opposed to a regular gas engine. Uh, you know, like I said, it's quiet, your car is automatically an automatic, and it also doesn't pollute. What is so hard to understand about that? Those are nice aspects. For over a century, we have tried to perfect the gas engine to be as quiet, as refined, as vibration-free as possible. So why wouldn't, and from a consumer standpoint, why wouldn't you buy an EV? Not because of the, you know, the, the tree-hugging aspect, the, the econ, or the, the, the environment, but simply you get a car that breaks down less, is more quiet, has less vibrations, and uh, is more, you know, comfortable to drive. Multiple people have asked me, what is your all-time favorite car? Now, I would scream 1960 Cadillac, because I like it a bit more than the 1959. I like tail fin cars, take a look at the background, but I really like the 1960 Cadillac because of its sleek and understated design. Along with that are Chrysler forward look models, like the 1957 DeSoto, personal luxury cars from the late 60s, um, as well as French coach-built cars, especially coach-built cars like the Delahays, the Lodges, the Rolls-Royce Round Door. I kind of like that. Jonathan Maxwell asks, did you go to university? If so, what did you study? I did not go to university, I did go to college and I studied urban planning. It's another interest of mine, that, like I already said, the history of cities, as much as the car. I really like the, you know, the relationship between the car and the city. Might want to do an episode about it one day, how the, you know, the car influenced city design, although it's a bit off track. I used to work for uh, a couple of years as an urban planner, or urban designer. Now I work as a parking consultant at a parking consultancy bureau. I design parking lots and garages. Hey, it's, it's cars. How has making videos affected your personal life? Like if you told your family, financial, etc. I think it was a great addition to my life. Uh, before I did YouTube, I was just another guy that liked to uh, spend his time just playing video games. Now, that has dropped and I'm still sitting behind a computer, but the time I spent making YouTube videos has risen over the time. And it's just a creative outlet, really. Some people go, and there's nothing wrong with that, but some people go home after a day's work and they just sit behind the TV. I made the TV series, so to speak. Uh, I really just like to get behind my computer and do this. Um, it has brought me a lot of good things. People, especially from the Netherlands, has reached out to me, people that own classic American cars. I already made some friends and I'm slowly discovering like the, the Dutch American car community. They go to car shows, I usually ride with a good friend of mine who owns a classic American car. Um, you, know, you meet a lot of people through doing this YouTube thing, whether it is in the Netherlands or in America or anywhere over in the world. And also financially, it, um, it's nice. Um, you know, it, it does bring some extra money every month, which, like I said, I like to save up for eventually buying a house. Do an episode on the hot rod history? Sure. It will come, don't worry. Will you ever do the long promised K car, K car, K car episode? You know, the very small, tiny Japanese cars. Absolutely, it's still on the list, but it will probably be an even more longer promised episode. But don't worry, it will come. Will you do an episode on the DeLorean in the future? Will do. Um, I still have a long list of ideas, don't worry guys. If you're hoping for that I will cover that car, I will probably cover that car or that thing that happened in the industry. I still have plenty of interesting ideas coming up, including the K cars, including the DeLorean, including the Tucker, um, and some, some other cars. Trust me. Jeff Barnes asks, how was your trip to the States? Would love to hear about your experience. It was wonderful. Uh, I really finished the like the car game. I've I've now I can die peacefully. I've seen almost any car I really wanted to see, but I couldn't because I had to go to the United States. Uh, but I'm not going to tell you a lot about it because you will see it in an upcoming video, which is like a 
a documentary of my um, adventures and experiences when I was in the United States. Um, if I could revive one US brand, oh, that's a tough one because there is a reason why they got cancelled. Probably Oldsmobile. Simply because Oldsmobile used to be more or less the um, kind of like the like the uh, innovative division. You know, a lot of little things like front wheel drive and, and some other uh, uh, technological advancements first found their way in Oldsmobile. And so what would have happened if it would still be alive like in the early 2000s? Would it have been the first company from General Motors to react on the rise of, for instance, electric vehicles? Would Oldsmobile be the first to jump in on it and offer an EV around the same time Tesla was released? Do you think you'll ever do a viewer car showcase? Eh, not really. Um, every so often, especially during the summer months, I like to do a car review, but it's not my intent. There are some YouTube channels out there. The car and its ownership and the owner and why the owner bought it, so it's more about the owner than the car. For me, it's the exact opposite. I like to stick to the car and not so much to the owner, unless he really did some interesting modifications to the car, but otherwise the car is the story, not so much the owner. Huge Haggis asks, why did you come up with that 50s theme for your channel? It's brilliant, by the way. Well, thank you. That's the reason why I do it. No, uh, <laughs> no I really like to present Ed Sauter Reviews as a 1950s, 1960s TV show with the little intro tune, the outro tune. I just love that. Along with the, well, I, here's another thing. I like to listen to air checks from the 1960s. And I just like that style, the music, the advertisements, the commercials, you know, along with the DJ and, and, and the voice. Welcome everyone to um, Ad Sauter Reviews. Here is your chance to watch one of my videos. I just love that. And so that's why, what you see is really my style. I think it's a bit more unique. It's not generic. One of the last questions is from Nathan Joseph. Ed, if you imagine yourself, like your personality or body, as a car, which car would you be? Oh man, that's a tough question. I mean, look at me. I'm, I have the typical Dutch tallness, although I'm quite skinny. So that would probably be like a a long, narrow car. Is there any narrow car when it comes to body type? I don't know. I, I, not a limousine because I'm not that tall. This is a hard question, man. It's, what car would I be, either physically or mentally, like, like my personality? I mean, I can name a lot of cars which I would like to be, but are those cars me? That's, that's the question, but I think I'm just a... Uh, what am I? I, <laughs> I just, I don't know. You know what? I'm just going to name a car. I'm a Renault Twingo from the early 90s. Just a happy-go-lucky kind of car. Small, nimble, I don't know. A Renault of all cars. A Twingo. Oh, by the way, I'm not happy with that answer. It, um, I, st I, I need to think about this. And so we come to the end of this Q&A with one last question. Where is Ed's Auto Reviews going? I keep a list of video ideas and sometimes new ideas get added and sometimes I take ideas off the list because I've already covered them with a video. I can say that the rate that new ideas are coming up is not as fast as I'm, I'm, I'm ticking them off. I have just a limited amount of ideas and who knows how long I'm, I'm going to make videos. I probably can do it for another year, so well into 2023. And what happens then? I don't know. Maybe I'll just quit. Maybe I found some new ideas. Maybe my channel has taken a different turn which I don't think so because I like to keep it the way it currently is, you know, with the automotive history series, the occasional car review, controversial car topics, which are not even controversial at all, or I like to do it as long as I can. But if I'm running out of ideas, maybe, I don't know, 
I'll start up a new YouTube channel that's about something different I really like. So thank you for listening to me rambling for, I don't know, half an hour, maybe 45 minutes. This was a little Q&A. I hope you got a better view and understanding of who is that man behind Head Sutter Reviews. It is a one-man uh, show, as you can see. I have no help from friends or a manager or, or, or an editor. Everything is simply done by me and uh, I'll keep on doing it, at least for the coming year. So once again, thank you and uh, see you in the next video.